Tasted a little bit of it, obviously very salty. I've got some in my eyes, my eyes are stinging a little bit, but that's all right. Gotta taste some salt when you come to a place like this, don't you? <laughs> Indeed. Well, that'll be good to be Ude. Mama. Mama, mama, mama. For a walk and some sulfur. Sulfur roads. empty under here, there's nothing. I almost fell through to the middle of the earth. Let's go for a walk. Check out this lake, this yellow lake of sulfur. Look at this. at about minus 100 sea level and 
this has the hottest average temperature in the world. Number one, about uh, 35, 36 degrees Celsius. It also has, has the highest recorded temperature ever, high, about uh, 58 Celsius. So that would be about 150 Fahrenheit. Just imagine having to live in these conditions. And then we just saw yesterday some uh, salt miners packing up salt, doing backbreaking work, just sweat dripping down their bodies. This, I don't know how anybody can live in this part of the world, but somehow the locals managed to make ends meet selling their salt for five kilograms for 10 burr. That means about 30 cents, five kilograms of, for every ki five kilograms of salt they mine. Just incredible. This is one of the most unforgiving parts of the world. We have geothermal heat bubbling all around. We have sulfur, it smells like eggs here. Sometimes I get a whiff, a little, a little bit too strong of a whiff, and I start to cough uncontrollably. That's all right. Anyway, this place is like being on a planet made of eggs. Boom. Yellow and green. Dancing. Dancer. Dancing. 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 Donuts for breakfast. Oh, yeah. Donut. Donut. Ethiopia donut. Yes. Ethiopia donut. Ethiopia donut. Very good. Ethiopia donut. Chai. Puna. Good. Shiro. Injira. Good breakfast. Thank you. I'm a Sekinado. Breakfast. Good. Are you? Okay. Oh, wow. Good. Uh huh. Good, good, good. So proud of his donuts. Ethiopian donuts. Uh huh. Oh, wow. Proud guy. This is Afar, the region of Ethiopia, way out there. In the desert. place to stay here. Nice house. Got some shade finally. This is my kind of town. Stop. 
now for a rest. Shack looks uh, like a good place to lay my head. Now we're at minus 161 below sea level. It's about 45, 50 degrees Celsius. But these camels, it doesn't matter. They're carrying large loads. Look at these donkeys with the salt. You see, they're all loaded up with salt. These workers have been out there all day pounding away on salt, trading on salt. Spice up your food here. If you want to make your food nice and tasty, you can get some salt from here. This is what the camels are carrying on their backs. Kilograms and kilograms of salt. Alright, so yesterday was a bit of a crazy day because I was riding along on the street and uh, two 15 year old kids uh, stopped me in my path. One of them had a shovel and asked me for money and I tried to be peaceful and say hello, nice to meet you in their local language and even tell them that I'm a teacher and then they said no, 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 give me money. The guy looked a little bit uh, stern, like he wasn't messing around, and he started poking his shovel at my bicycle, so I had to wrestle the shovel out of his hand. I took the shovel from him, and he took off, the two guys took off running in the distance, and then I just had the shovel in my hands and cycled as fast as I could away from there, and then I had rocks thrown at me, of course. But I was too fast for them, so I'm just glad that I take care of myself and I don't want to toot my own horn, but I do work out pretty hard physically. So uh, for all of you out there that like to sit around and do and uh, enjoy the comforts of life, I'd like to say get out there, uh, take care of your body because you never know when it'll come in handy. You might have to fight or flight. And yesterday I did both and came out on top. So you do the same. Anything can happen in this world. I forgot to mention that yesterday after that uh, incident with the shovel, that uh, yeah, this place is uh, great because you never know what's going to happen. So I had that shovel incident and after that I cycled probably about 40 kilometers more that afternoon. And then I met just the nicest guy in the world. He took me into his home. His sister cooked a, a meal for me and they kept giving me more and more food. I was pretty hungry. And uh, just took me around town, helped me find a place to stay, introduced me to everybody and we just had a really nice time together. I feel like uh, I made a true Ethiopian friend uh, yesterday after that experience. 
and it was just really refreshing after a tough, tough uh, incident with the, the shovel. So, anyway, anything can happen in this country, and today, what lies ahead, we'll see. I don't know, but the scenery is pretty amazing, so I'm just trying to enjoy it. Time for a break. Bunna. Bunna, I'm a second arrow. Bunna, conjo. 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 Oh. Conjo. Smell. Smells so good. Bunna. Yes. Bunna. Time for a break, midday here. Kids playing billiards. Yes, my bike resting. Oh, yes. Uh huh. Conjo. Picked up a friend here. Salam. How are you? Damra Talon. Where are you from? Kobu. I like your bicycle. Psycho. Psycho Conjo. You're a psycho. You're a bicycle. Conjo. Conjo. Conjo in America. Very good. Good. Yes. Bicycle. Yes, you are a sportsman. Sportsman. Yes. Wow. This looks like a nice road. Wow. Nice. Grade 12, yes. Grade 12 students. Automatic. Up here at 3,000 plus meters. Now it's time to go down. I've been working hard all day, pumping the legs. Now it's time to get some wind in my face and get some speed. Let's go. This scenery, this rock just sticking out of the ground like that, out of nowhere, very incredible. Incredible. Salam. 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 All right, here I am. I made it to Lalibela, the biggest uh, tourist town in Ethiopia, known for its rock churches. And to get here, I had to go through hell. Hopefully heaven is awaiting me here. But anybody that wants to do a cycling trip in Ethiopia, I recommend do not cycle to Lalibela from the main paved road. 
here to the town itself. 60 kilometers, that's a 60 kilometer ride you do not want to do. I'll tell you why right now. So I was cycling along this road with a lot of potholes and, and uh, rocks and stones everywhere. And of course I can't go fast under those conditions. So what happens? About 30 children come out of nowhere and start chasing me and grabbing my bike and grabbing my bags. And then my rack just collapses on top of the tire so I can't go anymore. And so I have to stop and fix the rack while I have an audience of about 30 children around me. And, and I was finally able to fix it and keep going. And uh, actually the kids kept wanting to chase me after that and grab my, my bags all over again after they, they uh, screwed up my rack. So then uh, a big kid, about 15 years old, came with a big stick and started threatening to hit them with the big stick. And then they all backed off quickly and let me go. And I kept going along the decline slope area, went down, down a little bit. And then all of a sudden I see about 10 of the, ki the same kids up, up from above throwing rocks at me, about 10 of them at the same time. And luckily no rocks hit me, but uh, anyway, as you can see, I'm a bit stressed out from that experience. And then I decided I needed to get off that road as soon as possible. So I hitched a ride with uh, about three, three guys that were on a business trip to this town and not, they were nice enough to pick me up and we rode together the remaining I guess 30 kilometers or so I did half of it but if you come to Ethiopia do not cycle on that road that you will regret it those kids they're everywhere and they are relentless and they come at you in numbers there's nothing you can do and a one on 30 battle against kids with stones. So just take my word, stay away, get some transportation, hitchhike, do whatever you have to do. So I'm just lucky to make it out alive. And now relax, hopefully heaven is waiting for me at this town. This tourist destination better be worth it. Let's see what it has to offer. Stumbled upon Ethiopian wedding. Yes, uh, this is very interesting. A nice wedding we are having. Oh. A wedding time. Look at all this food. Injera. Injera. Big plates. Happy wedding to you. To the bride and groom. Oh. This is a video, video. Video? Video, video yes, coming. Video. Yes. 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 <laughs> uh, it is good, it's uh, good. Yes, Zukavia. You can traditional food. Yes, I'm gonna share the church. You can, you can, picture. Ah, yes, picture. This uh, video. This uh, video. 
went for a walk by myself around this town, La Libella, after having the worst morning ever and with the incident with the kids throwing stones. And once again, Ethiopia redeemed itself because I just stumbled into a wedding party and some people just waved me in and we had a lot of food and drinks and a lot of good times there. So special experience, Ethiopian wedding. It's heaven and hell here in Ethiopia. That's just the way it is. Um, highest of highs, lowest of lows. And we'll call it a day here. Hotel, two dollars and twenty-five cents per night. Oh yes, look at all these rooms over here. And here is my room. I come here from time to time just to be safe. Good security. There's a fence around here. I can put my bike in here. I've got a bed and electricity, but no water. Should be good enough. I can do some studying here at this desk. Here's the lock and door and the window. So that's the tour of this hotel. A very fine accommodation indeed. We're relaxing at this hotel now. It was pretty funny. This kid tried to follow me in here and he was helping me out lift my bike up <laughs> past this obstacle course we have of stones and metal sheets and up into here and then he started asking me for money and the owner shooed him away by heaving a huge rock at him and it nailed him in the back luckily he was able to turn around <laughs> to shield himself so it hit him in the back instead of the front but uh, I guess the, the kids are learning from the adults everybody's throwing stones it's just a, a way of life out here I've gotten uh, just a few stones thrown at me today but I've been able to uh, deflect that by just waving and saying hello and making conversation with everybody so that's a good strategy if you come to Ethiopia just give the kids and people attention and make conversation and hopefully 
you will be safe from the stones. <laughs>
Aha. Fungus onion. Looks good. Wow, that's a big one, huh? That's huge onion. Yeah, another. Whoa. And I was in the These are big onions. This is big one. I had a good one. Wow. So big. That's, yeah, heavy. One kilogram. Right there. Wow, 150 kilogram. Oh, wow. I see onions like that in Michigan also. Maybe they come from Ethiopia. <laughs> Salam. Salam. Here is the restaurant. We have all the crops mixed in here into a big pot. Fresh vegetables. Pepper. And if you want some more flavor, some pepper for flavor. And bread. bread yeah. Wow. This looks very good. And cook. She is the cook. Wow. Okay. How is this food, uh, Mr. So, George? So here we are eating this fresh food together with the farm workers. This is broccoli straight from the fields like you just saw a few mo moments ago. Let's give it a try. Mmm, that's good. This is the freshest tasting broccoli you can find. This broccoli is exported all over Ethiopia, maybe even to other countries like China or even United States or other parts of Asia. But this, this is the best taste you can find anywhere. Mm. All right, this marks the end of another day. So I've been cycling in the Tigray region where people are a lot more uh, laid back. So I've been getting bothered less and less by children on the road chasing me, asking me for money and throwing rocks, which is good. Um, but on the other hand, I was going up a mountain pass today and the a luggage rack on my bicycle just collapsed, so I had to hitch a ride here to Mekele, uh, about 60 kilometers in the, by van. And I'm gonna hopefully try to get that fixed tomorrow. And anyway, it's too bad. I was at the top of the mountain pass, about to go down and down really fast, but I couldn't do that because of the technical issue. And then we arrived here at Michele late at night and this guy very kindly escorted me to his friend's hotel, which is very cheap, about $5 US per night. And now I'm ready to go to sleep because My bike rack cleaned up, fixed up, and now I'm getting a bike wash together with uh, a bicycle. Uh, mechanic. Here's the mechanic. I'm a Thank you. Thank you. So it's about 8.30 p.m. And I'm inside this hotel room. And I just heard 
like five gunshots and people yelling and screaming outside. <laughs> so I'm just gonna stay here. I'm not gonna move. I'm not gonna go outside. Should be, the chaos should be cleared out by the morning. I'm, I hope. And uh, anyway, it sounds like the gunshots were right outside the hotel. I'm like right in the city center here. Uh, this medium sized city and uh, central uh, eastern Ethiopia. It's a big market area outside. And I'm just glad I got out of there as soon as possible. And I decided not to stay out tonight. And I made the right decision to stay inside. I guess this goes to show that uh, you should stay inside at nighttime when you're in Ethiopia. Just proof if you're thinking about coming to this country. Don't go out at night. Enjoy the day. <laughs> so, anyway, I'll be trying to go to sleep at night uh, pretty early today. Hopefully, there will be no more gunshots to keep me up. So, that's a wrap for today. Climbing up this mountain in Tigre. my life on the way down as well I don't know that's as close as I'm gonna get This is the rock church. And the door. It's 
is the founder of the church from Syria. <laughs> All right, so it's hard. <clears throat> Sorry, it was raining last night, a little bit yesterday, and I was cycling in the rain. My voice is a, ho a little bit hoarse. It's all right. It's hard to believe I was uh, at the top of that mountain, the church. As you can see, it goes straight up. It was uh, uh, one of the tougher mountains I've climbed, even though it's not that high. But um, some guys helped me out, especially on the way down. Uh, he had to go exactly straight up like a professional rock climber. So the first uh, part, I just went up with no ropes, nothing with just two guys like showing me where to put my feet and my hands. I was uh, pretty scared to say the least. And then on the way down, they had a rope, so they tied me up to a rope. I felt a bit more secure. But I'm just glad I'm on my bike again and uh, survived that experience. So anyway, let's uh, take a rest, ready to celebrate with a nice glass of mango and avocado juice in the town that's coming up. All right, I am leaving Adigrat. Adigrat is a town right by the right by the border with uh, Itrea, thirty kilometers out. I'm heading to Aksum. This is going to be my last official day on the bike in Ethiopia. I have about 120 kilometers to go today. Let's see how it goes. It's a nice morning. Some mountains to climb. Let's do it. Listen to that. It's the sound of peace and quiet. It's what I've been searching for for so long in Ethiopia. This is just a straight drop down. Be careful not to lose your balance here. Came from the mountains down, down, down into this dry desert landscape. No water around here. No rain, that's for sure. It's definitely hot. The heat is taking its toll on me, so I'm gonna try to rest here. This is called Mayot, water, and life. <laughs> Spiritual life water. So this is where I just got baptized in this holy water. First you start with this. Huh? Like you, you get baptized from here, you start from here. And then uh, the St. Michael, St. Indra, St. Almagro, St. Uh, Mary, 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 uh -huh. Mary. Uh, all this you have to, you have to get baptized. That's the hardest part. Okay. This is just the beginning. Okay, yes. Anyway, I feel cleansed now. Very special experience after taking a holy bath in that water. Refreshed.
This is a gathering for the day of St. Michael on the way to Aksum in Sierra Village. I just got I just got baptized in that holy water. Stream of water, feel nice and cool now, it's very cold. We have a fermented wheat and corn drink here that everybody is consuming. Has a little bit of alcohol, get a little bit tipsy, but not drunk. <laughs> and everybody's passing around injera and bread that the priest has blessed for holy food. This is the sleeping quarters here for people that stay at this monastery. They all bundle up in there, sleep for the night. Oh, maybe some people come, come can come here. They say, "Oh, this is a refugee camp or something." Oh yeah. <laughs> people who does not know. They say it's a refugee camp. <laughs> refugees here. Refugees, yeah. It's the culture. They use charcoal to wow. to to make their foods. Mm -hmm. uh, to cook their food. Wow. Charcoal for, for cooking. They use charcoal. Different type of people here. Yes. But they all together. Wow. All of them. They're here to get here. They came from different uh, parts of Ethiopia. Yeah. In the north, south, east, and west. The people from this country too. Yes. People who have HIV or cancer, yes, or even uh, albino, yes, uh, have, uh, diabetes, different type of disease, different type of virus, yes, plus the spiritual virus, spiritual uh, sickness, yes, evil spirit. Okay, let's go. Here's the runway. This might be one of the smallest airports I have ever seen in my life, if not the smallest. But it's nice, good service. Goodbye, Aksum. I'm going back to the capital, Addis Ababa, Ethiopian Airlines. Things are so simple here. I'm transferring. I have 20 minutes between flights. Just walking outside from one plane to the other. That's the way it should be. Made simple. Transfer in Lalibela, 40 minute flight back to Addis Ababa. Another small airport. I hope they're taking care of my bicycle. It looks like they have it on a cart over there. Next question is, what is your hope for the future of Ethiopia? The future of Ethiopia, we have to be the new government for our Prime Minister, Dr. Abiy Yahamed. We should be a part of this mm -hmm. Prime Minister because he's doing so far so good for the country. Mm -hmm. Like when I went to high school 2005, he was protesting against the government. And we speak about it, but they come with... AK-47 and they shoot fairness, you know, 
So now with the new government, you can speak, you can do what you want to do. Mm -hmm. And he's doing for all parts of Ethiopia, no racism, for Tigray Amara or wherever. Mm -hmm. He's doing equal for the country. Mm -hmm. So if we'll be helping and beside of the new prime minister, mm -hmm. we can change the country well in a good way. Okay. Yes, so can you explain maybe in more detail what happened in 2005 at your school? Can you explain in yeah, detail? Yeah, like I went to high school mm -hmm. with a friend that you saw this morning when okay. we had a lunch. Mm -hmm. So we were protesting, you know, we were mm -hmm. shouting with a lot of on the school. Mm -hmm. But the police come with the AK-47 and mm -hmm. they shoot. We were shouting, crying because they just open the gate and they come with a K-47 and they're shooting people like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that was happened. Yeah, 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 sure. So this is this must have been a very um, difficult thing for you to see as a high school student, right? Yeah. So do you have any regret for protesting? Because maybe you have some um, mental, uh, some memories of yeah, this. Yeah, of course, I have do you bad have, memory. Do you have some regret about protesting or do you think it is it was a good decision for students to protest? Yeah, we was a good decision protesting. Yeah. yeah. Oh. But they don't let us to protesting. They oh. just want to hide us and be quiet. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes, yes. So, did this happen in to other schools yeah, during this time? Yeah, some schools as well. But oh. one of our high school, it was in town, center of the town. Yeah. So they can attack easily, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it will be known famous school. It's called Fasilo. Oh, Fasilo. Is Fasilo the name. Secondary School. Oh. It's the place where I learned when oh. I went to high school. Yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank so for last 27 years, mm -hmm. it was dictator government killing mm -hmm. a lot of people. They take a lot of people in jail. Yeah. Even they took me to jail different times. Oh. And they killed 2000, two years ago, they killed one of my friends wow. who were protesting nearby the bridge where he saw. Yeah. We grew up in the same village, we went to the same school, but they shoot yeah. him. Wow. Yeah, two years before, before the new government, before yes. Dr. Abiy Yahman, the new prime minister, before he's getting president, yeah. a pri before he's coming a, a new prime minister, mm -hmm. they shoot a friend of me. They wow. kill a lot of people. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And they put you in jail. You went yeah. to jail. I was. I also went to the jail and beat me different parts of my places. Wow. Yeah, wow. even here. Oh, oh my gosh. Yeah. And also, my feet was burning. They took off my shoes, hold me tight to me like this. They beat me. Wow. Different, different place. Yeah. Wow. It was a bad government. The old government. Wow. In jail. So they beat you in jail. How long did you stay in the jail? Like in a week. One week. So for two days, your my family friend don't let us to beat us. Wow. They just beat very hard. So if the family saw us, they will make problem. Oh. So they don't let us to visit for anyone. Oh. They just put us, me and my friends, for my friends. Wow. Wow. And every day in jail, you were getting beaten every day. Not every day. The first day mm -hmm. was uh, bar tough, and after we cannot walk, we walk like this. Oh, you were stuck yeah. to the chair yeah. for one not day. Not stuck, not on the seat. Oh, they tied you, tied you to the chair. No, they tied us, they beat us, seven police. Seven policemen. Wow, wow. For one person. Wow. Just for me. Oh my gosh, yes. And, wow, that must have been uh, very, I mean, difficult, especially for a young person in high school. Of course, right. not not this when I was high school. It's like two years, three years ago. Oh, two, three That's years ago. It's another things. Oh, okay. Another history. Before, before the the new the prime government, minister Before started. the new prime minister. Oh, and you were protesting at that time also. Yeah, a lot of people. I wow. can say people from Gondor. Yes. It was like uh, in Barter, the f biggest protesting. Uh -huh. That was like two years ago. Wow. It was full of people and a lot of people went to without the flag, uh -huh. with the stars. Yes. So the government doesn't want, the old government doesn't want without the stars. Yes. That's why they killed my brothers, my oh. friend. Wow, wow, wow. So the new prime minister is uh, 
doing good things, yes? A lot, a lot. I have no word how to explain. I can yeah. speak what I want, you know. You yeah. cannot yeah. a month with money or what before you have to hide. Yeah. If you don't know the person who is there, you may even know you scared. Yeah. If he works for a government or no, you don't know. Yeah. And yeah. if you speak bad things, they will catch you later or beat you. They do what they want. Yeah, yeah. It's not uh, democratic. Yes, yes, yes. Wow. So this is such a big change. So, totally. So how is your totally. how is your feeling now with this big change? Thanks to God, I, I have no word to say. You know. Yeah. It's very totally changed. Yeah. You can speak. You can do what you want to do. And last winter, when people do for all government the bad things, on yes. went to the leader, he yeah. take to the jails. Uh huh. He pick them. Yes. To be on a jail, you know. Wow. Still now he's doing also these things. Yeah. So I am even. The world, the best prime minister in the world, yes. for me is Dr. Abi Ahmed. Oh, okay. He better than Obama or yeah. better than they are more educated people. Yes. To control a short time and a big change. Yes, yes. You can believe that. Wow, wow, good. He's he's my hero. Yes, my wow. man. Wow, wow. So if you were to meet this new prime minister right now, what would you say to him? If 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 I am him, just pretend. What would you say? Keep going, that. Keep yeah. going, you and why? Okay. Next question. What is the best thing about your country, Ethiopia? For me, it's the best country in Ethiopia. The culture. Mm -hmm. I mean, the culture when people are having something they like to share and helpful mm -hmm. for people who come to Ethiopia, like their hospitality. You know, they. When you go to people's house, when they have a food, sh they share you. They say, come and join, you know, they share you what they have. And they say, very welcome about the culture. When they have cough ceremony or whatever, anything they do, they share for the people. Okay. Especially you go countryside, they're very welcome, you know, they do what, they share you what they have. It's what you saw, I think, mm -hmm. when you biking on the countryside. Mm -hmm. The people like very friendly, nice. Mm -hmm. I think it's a good culture of Ethiopia. Okay, good.